What is up guys, it is me, Real American Politics, here again with the deep dive video of the 2022 Senate elections. Now I kind of want to do this a once a month type of thing, like look at the candidates we know are running, potentially running, and how the race actually looks like. Now, I have three colors, of course, in the map. Red is Republicans, that's obvious. Uh, blue is Democrats, which is obvious. But I have a third color. The most interesting races. Not for just a general election, but for the primaries, for the general election also. So, yes, we're going to do a deep dive into all the yellow states in this video. And I hope to do this a monthly type of thing, or every two months or so. Something like that, because this is a very interesting cycle. And the best chance we have at making America first candidates more widespread. And so I have 13 races where it's going to be an interesting general election, interesting primary season. And not just like good for America first like you'll see in like a, a state or two. But most of these races, this is a chance for America first candidates to do this. So I hope you guys do enjoy this video. You guys better smash the like button down below. I want to hit the 100 likes. Can we do that? 100 likes within the first day. And that'll be epic. Um, also, hit the subscribe button. Uh, share with all your friends. And yes, let's get right into the video. So we have 13 states where we have a chance at getting America First candidates. Well, 12. We'll talk about the special um, northeastern state that's yellow. That should be yellow. But let us start with Alabama, right? So Richard Shelby, the neocon rhino establishmentarian from Alabama, is not running. Thank the heavens he is not running for re-election. He won by 20 points in 2016. He's not running. Thank God he was an awful, awful, awful senator from the state of Alabama. He wasn't America first. He was an establishment pleb. He's awful, and just just thanking the heavens for making this clown not run again. He is as bad. So, Alabama is safe Republican. No matter how you put it, no matter who you run, it's safe Republican. But we got to run the correct candidate. This is a state where you run the correct candidate. Don't you dare run some neocon rhino pleb. Because if you do... It's not going to go well. So I recommend the p viewers out here look at one candidate and one candidate only. Because I do believe he will run. Mo Brooks. This guy is the definition of based on a lot of issues. I mean, you can look at abortion alone. He is epic on abortion. He is pro-life to an extreme. That's what we need. Not this, oh, well, we're going to compromise an abortion. No. Pro-life to the extreme and you go down on free trade He is pretty good on trade impose tariffs against countries with manipulative currency and He's pretty good on trade also. That's the one economic issue that I care about the most free trade and Mo Brooks is pretty freaking good on free trade So he's perfect for free trade gun control. He is extremely pro-gun um, healthcare, he's kind of meh on. I mean, he's against Obamacare, which is good. But it's just okay, I guess. Better than most Republicans. But he's kind of just cringe on some of it. Like, he voted for the Ryan, the Ryan budget, which is just bad. Go look that up. It's not really that good of a healthcare plan or a Medicare plan, whatever you want to call it. It's not that good. But the one issue that he is absolutely perfect on is immigration remove al illegal aliens from america then stop luring them in he is epic on immigration he's extremely anti-amnesty he's for no birthright citizenship so if an illegal immigrant has a child here that child is not automatically a citizen he is epic on immigration he's pretty good on a lot of other issues tax reform eh, we'll we'll just ignore that that's the one issue I disagree with him heavily on, but point being is, he's a pretty good Republican. And Mo Brooks is by far the best candidate we could run for America First candidate. So the next state we do have here today is Florida. Now, everybody hates Rubio. Nobody likes him, he's just bad, alright? The actual America First people, the actual Republican Party, don't like Rubio. 
but he was eons better than Murphy. So that's the reason he won by eight points. I mean, he is good for Florida, but he's not good on policy. And this is an opportunity for us to primary out this coward. He's going to run again. We know that for a fact because he filed his um, statement of candidacy, all that stuff. He's an awful, 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 quote-unquote, conservative. He's not America first. He's a pleb. So this is an opportunity for Republicans to primary out Rubio and not be affected politically. Because it's a red wave year, and Florida is an America first trending state. I mean, you look at the 2020 results, prove the point that America first candidates do best in Miami-Dade, Palm Beach, Broward, and a little bit better in places like Oscala County, Orange County. So, an America First candidate would win Florida by a wide margin. And either way, it's going to be likely Republican. Florida is a Republican-heavy trending state. Even with uh, Jacksonville becoming a bit more Democrat, places like Tampa Bay, they're starting to halt the trends a little bit. Miami Dade, trending heavy Republican. Broward, trending heavy Republican. So, Florida is, no matter what you do, a likely to safe Republican state. But there's one candidate that he said he won't run, but I personally believe he will run, and we have to support him if he runs, is Matt Gates. Matt Gates is one of my favorite congressmen. He is epic on a lot of issues. Pro-life, that's right off the bat, that's good. Not this Lisa Murkowski crap. Um, you go down here a little bit, he's epic on free trade. Implement USMCA for improved North American trade. Pretty good on trade. He's pretty good on government reform. Constitutional amendment for congressional term limits. That's awesome. You need term limits for Congress because some of these people, they've been here since the 70s. Like Nancy Pelosi. Biden was in there since the 70s. So, point being is he's awesome on government reform. Trade he's pretty good on. Gun control he's pretty good on. Immigration he's pretty awesome on. And jobs, he's pretty good on the minimum wage. The minimum wage is a mess. We'll talk about that in a later video. But point B is minimum wage is good that he's opposing it. And he's pretty good overall. I mean, all of this is good stuff. Now, Matt Gates said he's not going to run. I personally think he will. And I do believe we need to support him. He's the best candidate we would have in Florida. And that's a state where he would run, and I think he would still win by five, six, seven points at least. Especially a red wave year, it's instantly likely Republican. So I do believe Matt Gates will run, and we have to support Matt Gates. He's the best candidate we have in Florida. All right, so the next state we have here today is Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. Ah, <sighs> Georgia, you really, um... Yeah, you got it too woke for my liking, especially around the Atlanta area. I mean, some of these counties are just Cobb County, Gwinnett County. They have just gotten completely woke. And it's just bad what happened in the Atlanta area. And this is the fault of the Republican Party down in Georgia. The uselessness, the neocons just doing absolutely nothing in the Atlanta area. Just let it fall, essentially. Because orange man bad. So... Georgia is a state where this is probably its last stand. In 2022, this is probably its last stand in 2024 for the Republican Party. And personally, I do think that, especially with the red wave year, you have Warnock who won on pretty much a fluke both times. I think that it will be Republican, but it's going to be like a two, three point win for Republicans. Only reason that's Republican is, A, you got Biden screwing everything up. B, you got Warnock being absolutely useless, and C, well, it's a red wave year, so it'll help Republicans just barely push it to a lead Republican state. Now, <clears throat> there's one candidate that we need to run absolutely. We cannot have David Perdue run. If we do, we're doomed. All right, if David Perdue wins, Warnock wins again. So let us just run an America First candidate, a populist, somebody that's good. And that person is, of course, Doug Collins. And now everybody knows he ran in 2020 against uh, Kelly the Robot Laffler. He sadly lost, well, because of the crappy election system that they do in Georgia. So he lost, but if he would have won the primary, whatever you want to call it, he would have won against Warnock. Let's be real here. I mean, Laffler was one of the worst candidates he could have run. He, he, she was not 
a populist candidate. Warnock ran as one, and look what happened. So, Doug Collins is a populist and a perfect candidate for Georgia. He's awesome on abortion. He is pretty good on <clears throat> families and children. He's pro-family. Pretty good. He's pro-family. He's pretty good on trade. If he was a bit better, it'd be fine. But, you know, he's better than most Republicans. Immigration, of course. A lot of these, you notice the trend. They're all awesome on immigration. All pretty good. They're perfect on immigration, essentially. You keep going down here. He's pretty good on tax reform other than this. We'll uh, just ignore that. But he's overall pretty good. Except, of course, you... <laughs> We won't talk with a fair tax. It's not a good tax reform. We'll just say that. But other than that, he's pretty good on a lot of stuff. Healthcare is actually decent on. Gun control he's perfect on. And foreign affairs, he's always been pretty good. So, overall, he's probably the best candidate we have. And for that reason, I do believe it's a lead Republican state if we run Doug Collins. If we don't... Well, let's just say it's uh, going to be a lean Democrat state for a while. So Republicans better get their act together and nominate Doug Collins. It'll be a lean Republican state. So please don't screw this up. No other Republican Party, they will absolutely screw this up somehow. So the next state we have here today is North Carolina. And the good news is we don't have to worry about a primary. Burr is gone. Hooray. We don't have to worry about that clown. Um, there's really no neocon establishmentarian that we know of that's going to run for Senate. We got some decent candidates, but there's really two in particular that I do think should run. One of them has already filed. The other one I think will run. Either way, they're both actually good options. So either way, I think North Carolina is a state that will be lean Republican. I mean, even in 2016, Burr won by 6%. I think a populist America First candidate or somebody halfway decent, would win North Carolina by 3-4%. I mean, yes, you got places like Wake County, Guilford County, and the Research Triangle just getting ridiculously Democrat, but there's still a lot of gains you can make in the western part of the state, or the eastern part of the state, and the western part of the state. So either way, I think it would be a 3-4 point win for Republicans, especially a red wave year, and Democrats not really having that good of candidates that we know of that's potentially going to run. So yes, we have two candidates, and the first one I'm going to just barely go over because everybody knows this, Laura Trump. People have been saying she's going to run, she's probably going to run. She's a good candidate for North Carolina. Now, do I think she'll run? I truly don't know. I think she'd be a good candidate, but we just don't know if she'll run or not. So I'm just going to barely glance over this, but I do think Laura Trump would be a perfect candidate for North Carolina. She'd do good. She has a Trump in her last name. So she'll be perfect, I think. But there's an interesting candidate that I don't think people have heard of before. And his name is Mark Walker. And he's really not talked about much, but he has declared his candidacy. And he's been pretty good. Nobody really talks about him that much because he's really just quiet, a lot of stuff. But he is actually a decent candidate. So he's pro-life, I mean, other than, like, he should ban all abortion, he's still better than many Republicans. Um, he's pretty pro-life, of course. He believes marriage is a union of one man and one woman. We'll talk about that in a different video, I'm not going to get myself into that mess. He's pretty good on immigration. I mean, this guy is not talked about a lot. He is pretty good. The, he opposed all forms of amnesty, protect the border and prevent illegal entry, go to yes to ban dreamer immigrants from military service, you just keep looking, and he is good on a lot of issues. He's even good on tax reform. For the flat tax, absolutely. So overall, he is a good candidate. He's the only Republican that's actually declared, I believe, in North Carolina. So he's a good candidate overall, and I do believe that it'll be a lean Republican state either way you put it. So hopefully, he Republicans don't screw this up and nominate Richard Burr 2.0, but knowing them, they probably will. So yes, that's North Carolina, Georgia, Florida. We have one more state to look at today. So the last state we have here today is Ohio. And this is the one state where people on the left are, are idiots when it comes to this. No, Ohio is not competitive no matter who you run. People say, oh, Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan in a red wave year in a statewide election in Ohio, a red trending state. Yeah, no, especially if you run an America First candidate, a Republican, a Trumpist. 
you're not gonna win. You're not gonna get within ten. So either way you put it, it's safe, uh, guys. It's it's safe, Republican. Don't just stop with this nonsense. That's gonna be this quote unquote tilt Republican to toss up, say like some clowns on the left would say. So overall, Ohio's safe Republican. But there's one candidate that I hope does run. It's not the candidate that the the Gabe the Gabe's of the world want. The freaking JD Vance. I don't think he's gonna run. But there's one candidate that said he's not going to run, but candidate I do think he would run. And of course it's Jim Jordan. If you don't know who Jim Jordan is, you've been living under a rock for the past couple of years. But essentially, just, you go down to his free trade, he's awesome on free trade. You just go down to immigration and birthright citizenship. Declare you English as an official language of the United States. And, Yeah. <laughs> He is pretty good, to say the least. So you just keep going down and you see that uh, he's a perfect candidate for Ohio. He's a populist. He's America first. He's perfect. So there's not much said. This is Jim Jordan. If you don't know who he is, yeah, you've been really living under a rock. So anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this first part. There's probably going to be three parts of this series. And of course, this will be a monthly or bi-monthly series. And yes, hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, hit the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, and yes, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching.